Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. In the last episode, I uh, reunited again with uh, Jode, courtesy of Inspector Ca Cabanella, who saw fit to uh, bring him to the Justice Minister's office, essentially just to brag that he caught him, I guess. And right, w and right as all this is happening, I relay uh, everything that I've learned from Camila about her kidnapping and her situation, both to Lynn and Jode himself. And Jode, having, still having some good fatherly instinct in him, decides that now he's re now he's willing to cooperate with me and Lynn and trying to uh, rescue rescue Camila and solve whatever the hell is going is is going down tonight. However, we still have the problem of getting Jode free and stopping his execution from being carried out carried out tonight, which uh, the Justice Minister still seems uh, bent on doing, unless we can uh, help him out with his uh, family situation, N namely figuring out, namely confirming, finding a way to confirm to him that his daughter is okay and that she wasn't kidnapped by our mysterious people in blue. And I have to do all that before the uh, before the prison van arrives and takes Jode away back to the prison to be executed. So I'm on a very tight schedule. So let's just go ahead and get started on that. Chapter 13, 12.51 a.m. Why do I have a feeling this chapter is going to be tricky? Maybe it's the number 13. Last I checked, it is an unlucky number. I visited the novelist's apartment again. I'm hoping to be able to do something about this mistaken identity kidnapping. Well, it looks like she's in bed. As long as there's any possibility that it could be his own daughter who was kidnapped, I doubt the Justice Minister will call off the execution tonight. The key to dispelling the minister's doubts is now in bed, coughing. And I need to use this key before that prison van arrives to pick up our death row inmate. So, how are you going to dispel your daughter's uh, worries this time, milady? My darling angel. Oh, just listen to that cough. You naughty thing. Did you leave your nice warm bed to go out into the night to play? A daughter after her, my own heart. But I must confess, I didn't even notice you were gone. Not surprised there, you are kind of glued to that typewriter of yours. I didn't go out to play. I went to buy Papa a birthday present. He said he wanted a new lighter. Considering all, considering his other health problems and constant levels of stress, I really do think it would probably benefit him to stop smoking. But that's just me. But that's no reason to go out this late at night. But my fever finally went down. I could barely move before that. But look what it brought you. Your fever is worse now than ever. Here is to the feverish passion of my darling angel. Mama. Yes, darling. You suck. Let's call Papa and wish him a happy birthday. Even though it's already past midnight? Not tonight, Amelia. I hate you! Oh, well, you're not gonna clink your little wine glass to that? It looks like this little, lo this little girl was safe all along. I already knew that, but I'm still relieved all the same. And there's another lucky development, too. Amelia wants to call her father. So, this is what we're going to do then, I, I presume. We're going to have to try to find some way to allow Melie to call her father 
without uh, Mother Deary over there noticing. On the surface, it would seem very easy to do, considering how focused she is on her writing, but again, I doubt it's going to be that straightforward. Now, if I could just make use of that feeling somehow, that would surely bring the Justice Minister around. Okay. What exactly am I supposed to do here? Well, maybe before I get started, I could check a few places and see if there's anything new to have going on that might be interesting. Hey, why so quiet? Ray? going on? Maybe he isn't here anymore? Really? Well, can't say I'm exactly surprised that he wouldn't hang out here in this lamp all day. I mean, he did teach me how to use my powers, so I would assume then that he also has the same powers that I do. Which, again, makes me suspicious, like... Did you have something to do with Camila, with Camila being saved at some point? Because you're the only other ghost here that I'm aware of that has any that has and, and that has knowledge of these powers that I have to boot. So you're the only candidate I got. This line doesn't seem to be working. Hmm. Go here. I doubt anything will happen if I go here, but you never know. I wonder where where Ray is anyway. The room is filled with tension. I don't know. I say the lanky man in the white coat here is perfectly fine with the tension. Everybody's on edge, waiting, fearful. Everybody, everybody except one. Inspector in white is sitting, humming a tune to himself. Can I chat with you some more? Oh gods, I pray! Please allow me to blow up and scatter into a million pieces! What kind of prayer is that? But my daughter has been kidnapped! And the inmate whose death warrant I signed is glaring at me! The best thing for me right now would be to blow up! Uh, I disagree. I think the best thing for you would be to call off the execution. Then you can blow up. Listen to me. Your daughter has been kidnapped. Why won't you believe me? I tell, I, I tell you what. If you blow me up, I'll believe you. No. Oh boy. Now what? Uh, hey! Hey, where's Lynn? Oh wait, that's right, she went off to go do her own thing. The Justice Minister is worried about his daughter. If she could prove- if we could prove to him somehow that she- that she's okay, he'd probably relent. But he won't believe me. I guess we can't blame him. Probably the best way to convince him would be to get the kid to call, I know. If we could let him hear his daughter's voice. Yeah, that would probably work. But how would we do that? I know you can do it. I believe in you. Oh boy. Another one. Easy enough for you to say. Alright, let's get back into the phone line. I do not want to talk to you. I said I don't want to talk. Thank you. One of our park guardian is uh, lurking around somewhere. Nope. 
what our super is up to. Our mysterious super who happens to have a very familiar trap that I'm oh so curious about. Nope, can't get down there. Standing around, I see. Hmm. Doesn't look like he's saying much of anything. So how's our two favorite guards doing, I wonder? Interesting happening here since I've been last been. Not looking like it at all. Is back to being like a caged animal here. Not much seems to have changed since I last vi I visited last. Spiky is making that horrible noise, same as ever. Our condemned convict, Detective Joad, is still out. And the curry lover is stuck. You better hurry and get unstuck if you don't want your uh, secret to be found. My time will soon be locked away from me as well. I can't waste what I have left. I better get going. So I guess this is basically the game's way of telling me, there ain't nothing here worth checking out, stupid. So... I'll just check the mortuary, mortuary see what's going on down here, and then be on my way. I can't check. Eem, da da da. attention. Maybe she's on break. Did I notice before that um, the police chief's shoes are just lying here? So, is he just running around God knows where barefoot? That, that's gonna tear up your feet, man. I mean, we have shoes for a reason. Or maybe he's trying to get in touch with his um, more natural side so to speak. Walk around like our primate cousins. Our chicken nose chef is gone too, so they he must also be on break. Where the fuck are you, Ray?
Nothing here. Last place. That's enough screwing around. Let's get back to um, the story at hand, shall we? Got her. That's what he got him, excuse me. You're welcome. The phone. Ah oh, shit, she's gonna notice. God damn it. I knew it wouldn't be that straightforward. Amelia, I told you, you couldn't call him tonight. Why not? Listen to me, Amelia. Your father is about to make a big mistake. Do you go on? I would like to know why... I mean, I probably would be helpful to know why you hold such an animo animosity towards him. I want him to reconsider. What do you know about it, Mama? He's the one who's the Justice Minister, you know? All you do is what is write weird novels. Weird novels is highlighted in red, so are they just really weird or are they special somehow? Oh god, you've angered the beast. Whoa, holy shit. Your hair blossomed. Holy crap, I'm now just noticing your hair is like a freaking rose. What do you mean weird? How dare you disparage my romantic expressions! Now you've really made me angry. You really have! How do you expect me to forgive such an insult? I hate you! Short temper on this one. There. I'll be keeping my eye on you now, so don't do anything else mischievous. Like calling your father. I hate you! I can hear you, you know. Good grief, woman. Phew. Repair. I don't know what this family's issues are. But I know I do know I have to do something about this lady so Amelia can call. Hmm. Okay, so hello. Rat! I see a rat up here. Hmm. Mama, what is Papa about to do? Never mind. Nothing you need to know right now, Amelia. Why is everything always such a big secret? I'm part of this family too, you know. It's not something for children's ears. You'll understand someday. I don't want to know someday. I want to know now. It's not fair. You just don't want to tell me. I just want to wish Papa a happy birthday. Not tonight. If it was up to me. Let her call him. Not sure what this will do, but let's see what happens if I light it again. Yeah, I thought so. Waste basket is open. So, waste basket can be opened. Here, right in darkness. I better not pull out, pull out the lamp right now. And only pour oil on the flames of anger in this lady's heart. 
But what if I want to make her angry? If I want to give Amelia a chance to use the telephone, I have to think of a way to keep her mother out of the way. Uh, okay, I guess we can't screw with that lamp and ruin this lady's night. Ding dong. Oh goodness, look at the time. As I bask in my tale of love, time has been moving on this on at the speed of light. Hmm. So even though she's immersed in love, she can still hear this, eh? But this won't buy enough time no, this won't buy enough time for her daughter to make a phone call. There'll be someone else I can distract her with. Okay, fine. You're really gonna force me to use Mousezilla, aren't you? I can oh, turn this thing. Okay. Hey, dictionary's right here. Hmm, Blaze Dictionary. Wasn't this on her desk before? Poor thing. Destined to be returned to the bookshelves. Well. We can't have all our books hang, hanging around willy-nilly, so better a bookshelf than, I don't know, piled up in somewhere. Guess I can't close this anymore. Alright, I need you to do your thing, Mousy. Dear me, you're hanging on for dear life. I don't understand what the point of this valve is yet, but I'm sure maybe I'll figure it out later. Swing, baby, swing! Do this. Well, well. Having a good time, are we, little rodent? They have very sh sweet dreams. Oh, you that poor thing. Maybe a rat, but I didn't deserve that. Good lord, woman. Did you fancy the vintage, my whiskered friend? Wait, can I revive the, mou the mouse if it's dead? She's more powerful than I thought. Looks like she tipped us with the wall, the wall, uh, candle, candle brought to one side too. The angle of those candles. I get the feeling I've seen something very similar to that quite recently. Yes, we have. Hmm. Are you dead? Oh, Lord. If it wasn't dead before, it's definitely gotta be now. I'm horrible. I electrocuted a mouse. Oh heavens! A blackout at a critical time like this? I guess it works out in my favor, though. Even though it totally wasn't what I was trying to do. Of course, dim lights suit my story of love very well, but... I myself am not very fond of the dark. fucking horse. This chandelier just narrowly missed the back of my head. Well, we wouldn't want that precious little rose on your head to get whisk whisked away off of your scalp now, would we? I love the thrill of romance, but I don't need these kind of thrills, thank you. 
Did you just seriously light a match off your ass? Must be a strike anywhere match. Well, that's fine. I'm sure I can knock down this chandelier too. It'd probably cost the whole goddamn apartment to catch on fire. Ah, what a wonderful atmosphere. Perfect for a clandestine meeting in a dusky twilight. I don't exactly I don't exactly know how the situation came about, but I think I owe the rat an apology. The rat seems to be unconscious. But now that the room is changing to this, maybe we can use it somehow. Okay, so it's unconscious? Oh, thank God, you're still alive. I hope I didn't give you brain damage or something. I'd feel awful. Burn, baby! Well, that did fuck all to help me. Okay, I could probably turn this. Oh, do we? Do I have to set her on fire? That would be something. What a naughty chandelier! You gonna say something, sissy? That was close. Maybe I gotta get the thing to burn brighter first, and then lower it. But first, let's wait until she sits down. Okay, now let's do it. God damn it. Did I was I too quick? the chandelier for sure. Now, let's do it. Oh, come on. Lighter sucks if you can't even produce its own light around the flame. At least it's the thought that counts, I guess. something new to say to me. Maybe if I turn the valve again? I 
Again, it's gotta be the chandelier. But if I try to make it burn brighter and then lower it, it doesn't do shit. So what the hell am I supposed to do here? Nothing is coming to mind. Nothing. Zilch. I guess I'm just gonna mess, keep messing with shit randomly and see if, uh... Whoa! Okay. Such insolence! I admit you got some nice reflexes, but hey, something new! Something new. Sway's surprisingly quick. She dodged that thing like a pro. This better get serious here. Maybe I got. Maybe. Okay. I think maybe I now got something. Maybe I gotta get a right dead center on it or something, right? There we go! Amelie! Amelie, help me! Mama! Sorry, Mama. I'm too dizzy. I can't get up. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. Ahaha! Here is to weakness of my darling angel. Well, at least you're still in good spirits about this. The chandelier is on there tighter than her wedding band. She won't be able to escape on her own. What if I raise the crank? Help! 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 What? What is going on here? Amelia, look! Do you see this? Help me, please! Uh, I'm sorry. I'm too sick. I can't get out of bed. My head is spinning. So I guess you'll have to just... You'll have to stay up there spinning, too. You're being spiteful, aren't you? Looks like this lady won't be going anywhere for a while. Now the little girl can call her father. The trouble is, she can't reach it. I guess I'll, I'll just have to deliver it to her. Oh, that's right. The angle was candles. I saw something very similar just recently, didn't I? I spin, I've been sitting here for like three minutes straight here trying to think what was I, what was I missing with the sh chandelier thing, but... Yeah, turns out I just need to drop it right on top of her. All that th all that time thinking, and I couldn't really think of that right away. Quite embarrassing. Now, I could be a prick and set your hair on fire. So I think I'll do just that. Oh shit, the mouse! Oh, dear. Now I really owe that poor rat an apology. Yeah, you think? But this might be a really good chance for me, too. I have to get that phone to Amelie. Okay. Come on, baby. That poor rat. I'm so sorry. Mama! What in the world is going on here? It's okay, lady. It's a grown-up matter. You'll understand someday. 
Oh, goody. Excuse me a minute while I call Papa, okay, Mama? I'll only be a minute. <laughs> oh, she's not gonna be... You're gonna be in hot water later. Ah! Don't you dare, Amelia! I won't have it! Get me down! Okay. Here we are. Hello. Papa? <gasps> Amelia! Is that you? Of course it is, silly. What did you think? But I heard... They said you were... No, never mind. It's nothing. Silly old Papa. Happy birthday, Papa! Birthday? Right. It was my birthday today, wasn't it? I'm sorry we couldn't celebrate tonight. Thanks to mean old Mama. Oh, you mean old Mama? I mean, your mother! What is she up to right now? She's getting in touch with her inner primate by swinging on a chandelier. Well, she's certainly up, alright. My stubborn mother is kind of tied up at the moment. GET ME DOWN! She needs to be taught a lesson for causing us so much trouble. No, Amelia. I'm the one who was wrong. Go on. Huh? Could you tell your mother I'm sorry? What do you have to be sorry about? I was just about to make a terrible mistake. But it's alright now. Good God, this is the least amount of wrinkles I've seen on your face yet. It looks good on you. Oh. Okay. You're still young. There's a lot I can't tell you right now. The job of Justice Mister is very complicated, you see. Okay. But just remember... You're always the most important thing to your mother and me. Did you do something naughty to your mother? If you did, I want you to apologize. I don't think I did anything. But okay. I'll apologize. That's a good girl. So this mistake... Are you referring to Joe's execution? If that's the case, then... So what? Was your mother trying to stop... Was your mother trying to take drastic measures to stop the execution or something? Tell you the truth, I find that... To tell you the truth, I find the idea... I'm finding the idea of her just running off with you to go write romance novels more believable at this point. Okay, Papa. Have a good night. I love you. I love you too, Melie. Good night, sweetheart. Um, Mama? I'm sorry. My goodness. Why the sudden change? I... I guess I was wrong about you. I didn't understand. Oh, Amelia. I thought all you ever did was write these weird novels. That makes me a little sad. Well, based on what I personally sing, it wouldn't. It's not exactly. I don't exactly fault you for assuming that. Papa said the job, job of Justice Minister was complicated. Yes, your father's job is very, very complicated and difficult. That's why I couldn't talk to you about most of it. But you're right. I shouldn't treat you like, like such a little girl anymore. You're growing up, after all. And I promise to stop calling your novels weird and try actually reading them. What?! Oh, uh... Maybe you'd better wait until you're a little older for that. Okay. So, Amelia, if you're feeling a little more charitable toward your old mama, do you, 
think you could let me down now? You know, I would love to do that. But I'm just feeling too dizzy and sick right now. I guess you're, uh, not faking it this time. Tonight, on this holiest of nights, my deadline. Looks like the only thing pressing on me will be this chandelier. Here is to Papa and Mama's darling angel. I hope that, that chandelier isn't so tight on you to the point where it's cutting off blood circulation or something. I'd hate to uh, commit manslaughter now. All of a sudden, everybody's getting along again. It's such an abrupt change. I can't understand it. Is this really what family is all about? In any case, the situation changed dramatically now. I just hope the mysteries of me can be cleared up as quickly as the furrows on the minister's brow. I don't know where Camilla is, but at least now the Justice Minister's doubts are dispelled. I think I'll go back to his office, where everybody is waiting for the prison van. The Mister's family now has their smiles and harmony back. But Camilla is still in the hands of the kidnappers. I decided to go back to the Justice Minister's office. Surprisingly, the Mister's brow is still as furrowed as ever. Quite unlike a father who has just learned his daughter is safe. He still seems to be in the depths of despair. The atmosphere in this room is very different now. It seems to have an air of unfocused anxiety. I get the feeling something big is going to happen. Well, we are probably going to end up calling off the van, and uh, White Coat over there is probably not going to be happy about it. So, I guess you could consider that a big deal. I just found out that my daughter is safe. I'd like to express my gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for my daughter's sake. And for mine. No need to thank us, Mr. Mister. It was nothing. Well, you're right about that. It was nothing you did. What did, what did he do? But one question. I can't help but notice. Your daughter is safe. And yet, you still look unhappy. How about a little smile for us? Uh, of course, there is still the matter of the other kidnapping victim. But is that really the only thing that troubles you, Mr. Minister? What do you know? Please, let me think in peace until the prison van arrives. God damn it. I wonder if Lynn is at the park yet. Until we get her report, I guess I'll just have to wait here. This continued distress of the ministers. Is there really something more to it? Like the inspector in white said. I think it, there, I think there is. It seems to me the Justice Minister has some kind of big problem on his mind. Why don't you try talking to him instead of me? I don't, I don't even think he's ready to acknowledge my existence yet. He's an anxious fellow, yes, but I bet he knows when to accept the truth. Would his face be so furrowed otherwise? What does one have to do with the other? Alright, fine. Acknowledge me, bitch. Hello, Justice Minister. How about you finally admit I do exist? That thank you I expressed. That was meant for you. Thank you. You're a ghost, aren't you? 
And you have the power to control and manipulate people, don't you? No, I don't have that kind of power. I can't control you. We've actually known you now. For quite a while now. Known what? But I had no idea they were the powers of the dead. Of ghosts. Wait. You mean you were aware of these pow these powers I have? Known. Known about what? We knew about the, we knew about the existence of somebody who could control others. A manipulator. What's this? Manipulator. That's why your execution order caused me so much anguish, Detective Joad. Mr. Minister. Why why don't you tell us everything you know? Yes, I suppose I should. You need to hear it all. All about the huge mistake this foolish man made. So who's this manipulator? There are some cases in this country right now that are under a top secret investigation. Of course you wouldn't know, have known about them, Detective Joad. Right. They don't share too much top secret information with the inmates in prison. There are three prisoners, including you, in the special prison you just escaped from. All three cases have certain points in common. That they all had that the other two were that the other two incidents, the other two inmates were leaking top secret information about the country's secrets, right? They do, do they? Tell us more. The rock singer who leaked national secrets in his lyrics during a TV broadcast. The curry-loving fellow who took the chef, the, ch the chief commissioner hostage at the Metro Police Department. Neither of these men had a motive for their crime, and both of their crimes were impossible. Possible. The curry lover had no way of knowing how to infiltrate the commissioner's office, and the rock singer had no way of knowing the national secrets he leaked. And yet somehow they did both of these things. The special investigation unit submitted an investigative report to me on, on them. They concluded that these men's criminals' acts were not of their own volition. But how could that be? The theory the unit came up with was the existence of a manipulator. A manipulator, huh? That's when the special prison was established as a facility to research that theory. So that's what that prison's for, huh? Some unknown power has been at work. These past several years, Inspector Cabanella has been studying these cases. He has, has he? Manipulating somebody into committing a criminal act. According to the Inspector, The first case of its kind was a locked room murder involving our nation's best detective. Are you trying to say I was manipulated somehow into shooting Alma? I appreciate the theory, but unfortunately, I don't recall being controlled by anybody. That's right. If anything, based on these on the flashbacks I've seen earlier with that trap with that makeshift uh, contraption that you're that Camila made. I'm more inclined to believe that it may, may have been the work of a ghost manipulating objects. So I'm now I'm wondering, maybe this manipulator isn't so much as controlling people directly, like possessing them or something, but rather indirectly guiding them to commit certain acts. Like, say what I've been doing this entire game. And if that's the case, then that that just makes me wonder. Is our manipulator a ghost? 
It's just not possible to manipulate others' behavior like that. My powers certainly don't work on living creatures. Wait, I just thought of someone else. Unless you manipulate objects in a certain way in order to kill people and then save them and establish a core. And then once you establish a core of them, you can communicate with them directly about anything you want them to, including any information that you, the ghost, may know about. So now I'm what? But no, that, that, that can't be the case because the other two prisoners don't have cores. It can't be, it can't be that. Ah oh, shit, I forgot to read that. However, I was seriously mistaken, and it proved to be a big mistake. What? You mentioned a mistake. Could you tell us about it? I suppose everybody here has the right to know. Alright, fine. I'll speak out loud so that Inspector Cabanella can hear this too. There's something I'd like the two of you to hear. It's about a mistake I made. Inspector Cabanella, when you first made that report about a manipulator, I'm afraid I didn't believe it at all. Impossible, I thought. Perfectly understandable, Mr. Minister. But I was wrong. That kind of power does exist. And I... I learned the truth of that firsthand. What's this? A month ago, I signed the order to carry out Detective Jode's execution. However, that act wasn't of my own volition. I was being controlled. What? You never told me about this, Mr. Minister! What's going on? This document, what am I doing? The fuck? No, I mustn't sign it! Wait! Don't deliver! That document! So, if this is indeed the power of the dead, then you can manipulate people? Not just dead ones, but, but living ones at that? Now I'm thinking. Ray is the only other ghost I'm aware of, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they might be this manipulator. But at the same time, I have nobody else who I can uh, focus my suspicion on in regards to any no in regards to these powers of the dead, because they're the ones that told me about my powers to begin with. But. That just now, and now I'm wondering. Did they truly teach me everything about my powers to me? I, I, I this is just a hunch I'm going on. I don't, I don't have anything solid to base my suspicion on Ray. I'll admit, but I, I have no other suspects here, and Ray's gone too. So I, I needed, to, I need to find Ray at some point. That's when it started. That's when all my fear, despair, and suffering began. Fear, despair, and suffering. At the time, it didn't even cross my mind that I had been manipulated. I'm pretty sure that 
that would have been my thought my thought process exactly if my body just started spasming and doing stuff that I didn't want to do. And my memory of the event was only hazy at best. Hmm, so the memory of being manipulated doesn't clearly remain, eh? Signing execution orders is part of a justice minister's job. At the time. I just thought my psyche was rebelling against the task. But the next day, it dawned on me. I remembered Inspector Cabanella's report on the existence of a manipulator. As a minister of justice, I couldn't admit what had happened to me. I only signed the execution order because I was being controlled. If something like that got out, this nation's judicial system would crumble. Besides, I had no evidence to present that I had actually been controlled. If it is a, if it is someone who's a if it is someone who's a ghost, I now got one, I now I now I'm also wondering, what would this manipula why would this manipulator want Joe dead? So in the end, I couldn't admit to anybody what had happened. Hmm. I suppose. But it sounds a bit like an excuse. You should have at least told us, Mr. Minister. Yes! Yes, I know. I should have. I was... running right away from the problem. And this led to your wife taking your daughter away and going off on their own, right? Looks like it. And then my wife found out I was worried about something. Well, if you go around with an expression like that, I guess it's bound to happen. I explained it to her, and she was dead set against the way I was handling it. don't withdraw that order and tell everyone the truth immediately, I'm moving out! And then, with the kidnapping tonight, with it thrust under my nose like that, I could no longer deny my mistake. This manipulator comes upon us from somewhere unseen. That's why I've been keeping my distance from everybody. So that's why you've been telling people to stay back. So there's somebody else besides me with powers of the dead. I'm fine with that. After all, I already knew about a certain destiny. What I'm not fine with is the fact that person can control and manipulate living creatures. That's certainly not something I can do. As far as you're aware, anyway. Apparently, different ghosts get different ghost tricks. Not necessarily, because if that's the case, then how would Rabe know how my specific powers work? But I never imagined that tonight. I would find out where this kind of power comes from. Where it comes from. Inspector Cabanella. This manipulator is a ghost. A departed spirit. A spirit? As a matter of fact, there's a ghost talking to us right now. What? What did you say? Jode! Don't tell me you can hear this ghost too! I'd say the only person who can't hear him is you. Spirit? Ghost? God in heaven. Excuse me, Mr. Minister. I suddenly have some urgent business to attend to, and what business is that exactly? I recommend you think long and hard before making your final decision, sir. You're really- Inspector! This is Lynn. I'm at the park. We've been waiting to hear from you. Have you found the evidence? 
Well, uh, the situation here is... It's kind of difficult to explain. Sissel, if you're there, come to the park immediately. What the hell is going on now? Looks like your help is needed, Sissel. Yeah, I guess so, huh? Well, this is one hell of a fucking bombshell, wasn't it, guys? I never saw that coming. The mister is being controlled, huh? I'm truly sorry, Detective Jode. I have no excuse to offer you. You know, maybe it was all for the best. What do you mean? Well, if it wasn't for all this crap that's been going on all the way up until now, and even this very night, we probably wouldn't have figured all this shit out. If you had never been manipulated, you never would have believed the power existed. After all, you're a realist, right? It just goes to show you, you never know when even the worst things can turn out good. Detective Jode, I... I don't know what to say. All right, Sissel. You better go help Lynn. She's a good kid, but she's got a habit of taking on other people's problems. Yeah, I know. Let's see. She's in Temsic Park, huh? You know, why? Why does it? Why is this only dawning on me now? Temsic Park. That's. That's what uh, the guy. That's what eyebrows and his boys, his boys and girls in blue, are trying to eliminate from the country, right? All traces of Temsek. So is Temsek a person? You guys, you need dialogue for me? Okay. I knew actually, right from the beginning. And you what? That you saved my life the first time we met tonight. Oh, that. When I talked about that miserable, pathetic, short-sighted, disgraceful man, you were aware that it was you from the beginning. I suspected as much. I knew I was talking about me. I hated who I had become. But you helped me appreciate the truth. Now I truly understand the wonderful support I've been getting from so many. Including that of my loving family. I'm glad to hear that. I'm starting to realize what a lucky man I am. It's all thanks to you. You're very welcome. Alright. Let's go see what's going on over at the park. Wait a minute. What are you going to say? I wonder why the inspector in white went running out like that. But I'm more concerned about Lynn. She looked really upset. I better go see her fast. You know, I wonder. Is he going. Is uh, Cabanella going over to uh, special investigation area? To be able to stroll along that fast. All right, to the park. Lynn calls, and I oblige. I take off towards Hemsick Park, a place where clearly something big is taking place. The manipulator. A person whose very existence sheds new light on everything. Detective Jode's crime, the execution orders, and even my own death. I just now had another thought. That security tape where it showed uh, Sissel being supposedly being shot by Lynn. Was Lynn being manipulated by the manipulator right then and there? And she did indeed shoot me? But then her memory of it was erased afterwards. Is that what happened? 
because if that's the case, then this ghost was right there, and the only other ghost I ran into shortly after that happened, right as I died, was Ray. Ray, are you the manipulator? Am I really right to be suspicious of you? Could it be? Could Lynn have been manipulated into shooting me? I'm starting to think that's exactly what happened. And I got one suspect in mind. Ray, I'm coming for you. And you better have some good fucking answers when I finally run into you again. Anyway, we can save what the hell, whatever the hell is going on at the park in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of Ghost Trick, Phantom Detective. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will see you for whatever sh crazy shenanigans I'm going to get into next time. Take care.